Time now to go to New York and talk to author, historian, and investigative journalist Leah McGrath Goodman. Leah is author of The Asylum, The Renegades Who Hijacked the World's Oil Market. Leah, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Thanks for having me, Max. So, Leah McGrath Goodman, you've been banned from entering the UK due to your investigative reporting into sex crimes in Jersey. Now, before we get to that story, let's talk about Jersey. What exactly is Jersey? Go ahead, Leah. Well, Jersey is an island, uh, the largest island in the Channel Islands, and it's a peculiar possession of the British Crown. It is the largest offshore tax center in the world, has more money in it than any other, and it's a very secretive island. Uh, it runs itself as a parliamentary democracy under a constitutional monarchy. It's very complicated, but technically Britain has legal ties to it, but it runs itself. Right. Now, it's recently been estimated that up to $32 trillion or more is held offshore by various entities. Any idea what percentage of that runs through, the, uh, runs through uh, Jersey? Uh, Jersey stows a great deal of money, but nobody knows exactly how much. In all of the UK, it's $2 trillion, and Jersey is the leading territory. So I think conservatively, it's about five billion per square uh, mile in Jersey. It's a four by nine mile island. It's very small. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, uh, Leah, we've seen Switzerland bombarded with investigations and financial threats from the U.S. Does Jersey yeah. receive similar treatment? No, actually. Uh, so really, officially, the Swiss star is fading, and the U.K. is sort of becoming uh, a lot more prominent in terms of uh, being a tax shelter destination. Uh, I'm not sure if that's part of the special relationship between the U.S. and the U.K., that the U.K. will be more favored uh, than the Swiss. But this, Switzerland has really suffered, and the U.K. has been doing better and better uh, in relation. And they both have about $2 trillion, so they're neck and neck. Now, uh, Leah, no matter how wretched the crime, the elites always circle the wagons when there's an income stream at stake. We saw this during the sex scandal at Penn State University. We yes. see this with LIBOR. Uh, so tell us about the wagon in which you were encircled. Uh, what happened when you arrived at Heathrow Airport? Well, I was researching uh, Jersey for a while, uh, a couple years, and at the time that I got property over there, uh, I met with immigration to just make sure that my affairs were in order, and they said that they were, but when they found out what I was researching, uh, they flagged me, they didn't tell me, and the next time I crossed the border, I was uh, imprisoned underneath Heathrow Airport, and uh, they went through all of my things. They refused to give me a lawyer or let me call my consulate. Uh, I was take all my rights were taken away from me, and and then they sent me back to the United States. I still have not gotten a straight answer as to why. Right now, now, now let's talk about the story itself. Basically, the story that you're covering sex crimes in Jersey, correct? Can you talk a little bit about this? Yeah, uh, probably to be more accurate, uh, Jersey had a. Jersey has a really polished international reputation as a, as a tax haven, but internally it has a lot of political problems ever since a uh, scandal involving an orphanage in 2008 where it seems that for decades children were allegedly tortured, raped, murdered, and uh, there were many victims who are still alive who can tell their stories very clearly. They're being completely ignored, and my feeling is that uh, it does need to be investigated more thoroughly, and they need to be able to speak their truth. Uh, Everyone who has come near this particular scandal to look into it from the policemen to the health minister have all been either driven off the island or thrown out of their jobs. It's been very bad and it seems like there's a big effort to try to keep uh, eyes away. Okay, so this is shaping up to be really quite a scandal. It has all of the uh, underhanded and disgusting sex crimes of a Penn State football team story uh, with, combined with the underhanded market rigging of LIBOR. Now, how high up does this cover-up go? Uh, and if there was somebody or an entity or an authority in place to stop the crimes, both the child abuse and the financial abuse, where, who would be that entity? What, what's the jurisdiction there in Jersey? Well, Jersey is really interesting. It's almost like a special purpose vehicle of the Crown. So the Crown can be more or less as associated as it wants to be with Jersey or as not. Uh, so effectively, uh, the Queen could step in, but of course just really doesn't ever do that. Um, and so Jersey runs itself more or less. Uh, that said, the head of the police 
uh, all of the police in Jersey in the uh, sort of the diplomatic head of police. He was told while he was investigating this orphanage uh, by those running the government uh, that the chief minister in particular said, you don't understand this could bring the entire British government down. So I assume it goes very high. Uh, and that there are strong reasons why they don't want people looking into it. But again, until I'm allowed back into the UK to investigate it, I'm not going to know, and the world isn't going to really know whatever happened to these poor children. Yeah, it's interesting um, in terms of the, the jurisdiction, in terms of regulators covering these various jurisdictions. We know that the city of London, for example, like Washington, D.C., or yeah. the Vatican, is its own city-state, uh, which uh, really uh, answers to authorities that are tied to uh, um, regimes that are outside of the countries in, in which these entities exist. Uh, here, Jersey sounds like it's an even more um, embedded, uh, you know, s it, within the system where it vir sounds virtually impossible for any kind of, uh, uh, of uh, regulatory uh, imposition at all. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, it's it's so insular. Um, it's a strange place in the sense that uh, the people. It's a just to be clear. It's a little island about 12 miles off France, so it's right in the English Channel between England and France. And to get there, you have to fly. To call there, it costs like five dollars a minute to call there from North America. The people on the island are very closed off, and a lot of them don't even know a lot of what's going on. Uh, books are banned on this democratic island. Materials are kept away. The press is more or less controlled by the government. There are bloggers on the island who try to, to keep people informed, but they are starting to go after the bloggers under what they're calling the Data Protection Act, and it's a way to basically gag them to keep them from being able to talk about what's happening. So there's there's a huge onus on trying to make sure that information is not revealed, even to the people who live there. Um, and for democracy, I think in a Western democracy, it's unprecedented. They have spared no expense in trying to keep things very, very under wraps. Right. Well, the British media establishment and their relationship to restrictions on journalists in their own country and in other countries, this seems to be a growing issue that's shaping geopolitics. Certainly you have a journalist like Julian Assange caught in the UK, uh, but it now is reverberating throughout the entire world with countries convening meetings to discuss uh, what's happening with his uh, curtailment of freedom of speech. Uh, here you are uh, down in the Jersey Island. Uh, you're being basically shut out from covering any kind of story. It, the British establishment seems to be uh, split. They don't really seem as though they want any kind of investigative journalism at all anymore. Is that your perception? Well, it's been very strange. I, I, it, it's hard to see exactly what's happening. Uh, I know that when the BBC interviewed me about this uh, recently in The Guardian this summer, uh, when they found out I was banned, what ended up happening was uh, Jersey said, Ms. Goodman, we invite you to come back to the islands. Uh, they have not removed my ban, but they are publicly stating that I'm welcome to come back even though I'm still banned. And the UK says Jersey is not letting me come. Jersey says the UK is not letting me come. So you can see how they can kind of toss it back and forth and try to create uh, confusion for someone who's just trying to do the right thing. Right. And, and where does the investigation stand today? So right now, uh, the investigation into the orphanage was shut down very abruptly. The police were moved from the islands. Um, one of them was suspended twice. Uh, and the senator who has tried to stick up for the victims has been jailed twice. Um, he's destitute. And he's still fighting. Uh, he's trying to take the, the case to London and see if maybe he can get the UK to get more involved in the affairs of the island. Um, some of the people involved here feel the rule of law has completely broken down, where the judicial system and the legislative system have more or less been hijacked, um, really to carry out the will of just a few people at the very top. Uh, the islanders themselves are very nice people. Um, a lot of them are very devastated by what's happening, but they feel powerless to do anything. The voting rate on the island is very low, um, and it's a small, very sleepy sort of farming culture with this financial services overlay. So when you're there, it almost feels like there's nothing happening. It's just yachts and diamonds and uh, champagne lounges. It's, it's, uh, it's a very deceiving place with a dark side. So I think, you know, until a journalist can come in and look at the facts or someone else uh, in England is going to do more, uh, this thing will just continue. All right. Now, Leah McGrath Goodman, of course, your book, The Asylum, the renegades who hijacked the world's oil market really went into depth discussing how 
the essentially uh, oil futures markets in New York uh, were taken over by a, a band of rogue traders. And this is what is driving the global market. Now, since that book has come out, we've yeah. seen revelations about similar types of behavior by rogue participants uh, in things like the LIBOR scandal or in the London whale that uh, was supposed to be trading a hedged position but was trading an unhedged position, caused a massive loss for JP Morgan. The culture mm -hmm. itself, is it, is it in any way being curtailed, this kind of psychotic, uh, bot-driven, rogue trading mentality that's destroying the global financial world, or is it increasing? Your thoughts? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the main thing is we're looking at uh, what I specialize in and all the things that you and I usually talk about, Max, are more or less institutionalized cultures of corruption, right? So there's usually a culture of, of wealthy people that are trying to defend that culture of corruption, and then they're the victims of them. So uh, is it spreading? I think the problem is, is we're seeing a lot more shoring up of wealth in amongst those who already have a lot of wealth. So as long as they can throw infinite amounts of money, in particular Jersey with all of its money, they have the ability to throw infinite amounts of money at defending um, their own actions no matter how awful. So if you have all that money, it's very hard for you know journalists like you and I can do things. But we really need to, to get the word out when these things are happening, when it's a very broad thing with, with lots of damage. Um, in this case, this case with Jersey, we're dealing with some of the most appalling crimes known to humanity, you know, the torture and rape of children, and that the fact that an entire government would just look the other way instead of dealing with it is very sad. Well, what you're describing here, it sounds like Jersey has become like a medieval fortress surrounded by a moat run by a mad king who's bent on torturing and raping while looting the country. And this is a model we're seeing replicated throughout the world now, isn't it? As the global financial system cracks apart, austerity is being imposed, countries like Greece are uh, on the verge of open uh, uh, revolt and, and um, uh, civil war. Uh, so we're seeing kind of a return, some call it a return to feudalism and neo-feudalism. Um, your thoughts? Yeah, that's an interesting concept. Uh, is this a return to feudalism? Uh, in the case of the Channel Islands, which is, you know, they're all still very feudal, the way they are run. So in a way, they never stop being feudal. Uh, but in terms of, you know, other parts of the world where we're seeing the, the great uh, concentrations of wealth resulting in, in a, a really large underclass developing, yes, uh, there's a possibility that we could start to see more uh, feudal tendencies. And it's something people should at least be talking about.